coming up this week on Ralph and Vicky's Archer's Choice. Moose are pretty tough, you know. You got to get in there. You got to get close. You got to find them. They can disappear in them willows like that, and they're gone. And the only thing, the only reason you know they were there in the first place was because you see their foot tracks. That's it. Okay, <sighs> hold it in the middle. Uh, the left. Your other left. To the right. Just uh, put it in the center. Uh, there. Welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. This week we're heading up north, way north. Our favorite territory in yes, the world. Yes, the Yukon. Yukon. McMillan River Adventures. You know, Don, Tyler, uh, Ryan. I, I mean, mania, baby. Oh, to, to the utmost. You know, this year, ev like everywhere, the weather. Huh? Right. I mean, it was, it started off in the Yukon. It was early. The rut was early. The weather was warm, and then it got cold. It was whack jacket. It, and we wanted to send it back. I hated Poet the weather didn't last didn't know year. it. Mm -mm. Poet didn't know it, get it? Yeah, I got it. Okay, good. But we do have a great show to share with you, so we're going to put it all together and get going, shall we? Moose mania, baby. Moose mania. I said that. I said it twice. No, but I said it first. Echo. The Yukon, Canada's westernmost territory, filled with history, amazing landscapes, and home to the biggest deer species on the planet, the Alaska Yukon moose. You know, one of the things about going on a wilderness hunt is sometimes the weather can really put a damper on things. We're supposed to fly out today to camp, and um, they can't see because of the snow squalls. So, not that it's here in Whitehorse, but where we're flying to, we can't land. So, we're stuck another night. Sometimes, just have to wait. Ralph and Vicki have been coming here since the early 2000s and know all too well how weather plays a big part in their success. Ralph and Vicki have played this game before. The weather in the north can be unpredictable. Special attention has to be paid not only to the weather where you take off, but especially where you land. Safety is paramount for guides and outfitters in the North Country, and weather is just one thing you don't ignore. Well, we just got the call. Tatina is going to come pick us up in about 15 minutes, so we just brought all of our gear down, and um, we got about 15 minute wait, and we're supposedly gonna be flying out, so I believe we have a two airplane trip. We're gonna be taking wheels from Whitehorse to Faro and then floats out to camp, so we'll keep our fingers crossed the ceiling stays high enough to fly out. You know, we've said it before, and that is when you start to do these style of hunts, Right. You have to have patience because the weather dictates everything. Everything. I mean, we made up to White Horse fine. I mean, we're excited to be up in White Horse. It's one of our favorite trips mm, to go on. It is. But it's a hurry up and wait. Well, we're here in Faro. We just kind of relaxed a little bit. We're waiting for the float plane to come in. There's another plane coming in on wheels, which we're going to go help unload and load some other stuff up so that they can go to another place. But then they got to come back and get us. But we might go to town and get something else, right? Does that sound right? I think that's a good idea. There you go. See? Go we'll visit the big control. town of uh, Faro. Yeah. So let's go shopping. <laughs> All right. So this is the happening place in Faro. Should we need to get anything? So I guess we're gonna run in there. Steve Hex. She has a list. Um, you might remember Steve. He guided us a few years back. He's got a list from Don that he needs to get some stuff. And they're telling us that this is the place to go to get what you need. After a few quick supplies, Ralph and Vicky are in the plane and on their way. Well, we're loading up. We're in Faro. We're getting ready to go to our to our camp. We can't wait. Ralph and the guys have got the plane going. I'm going to hurry up and go and help them load up some other stuff, too. And um, away we go. Moosevania, baby, and McMillan River Adventures. Ralph and Vicky are on the last leg of their journey. Safety is always on their mind because a big portion of the adventure is just getting to camp. Well, we made it to the Tay. We just got into camp. We're getting everything set up right now. It still looks as beautiful as normal. And we've got a different kind of cabin going on now. We didn't have that before. And then there's mine and Ralphie's little tent going on. He's getting his stuff all packed up and everything like that. So, hi, honey. We are here on the Tay. We are here with McMillan River Adventures. And once again, it is absolutely beautiful. And we can't wait to get on the river. There's snow on the mountains. There's bull moose grunting everywhere. We need to go. I'm starting a fire. It's I'm not trying. cold out. It is cold out. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Vic, it's beautiful out. Why are you starting a fire? We just because it's cold and damp, and it needs to warm up a little bit. You know, through all these years, I'm starting to realize I believe this woman is cold-blooded. It's beautiful. It's we're here. We're here in the Yukon. 
And Ugh. she wants to start a fire. It's not starting anyways. <sighs> now you know who starts the fires all the no. time. No, you don't. Now that the guys are settled in, it's time to get serious about getting the gear and tags ready for tomorrow's hunt. Night comes early in the Yukon, but dreams of big bulls and an overstoked camp stove make sleep a little hard to come by. Good morning. It's the first day here on McMillan River in the Yukon. Yay! Um, we went to bed last night, got to camp yesterday, went to bed last night, woke up, we have snow on the ground. There was snow in the mountains yesterday, but not down here in the river valley, but now there is. Um, and of course, we made the stove a little too hot last night, so in the middle of the night, we had to open the doors and the windows. <laughs> I told you so. I said, don't overstoke the fire. She's loving it. The thing's blazing hot. It's orange. The pipe's orange. It's, I don't know what the temperature is inside the tent. I'm dying. She's loving it. I believe we're getting everything kind of ready and um, Ryan should have some coffee made in his little cabin there. So we should go and get some coffee. We're gonna head down the river here. Okay. We got a fresh snow. I haven't been down the river for a few days now. So we're gonna look for some new new okay. sign. Maybe see some good tracks in, this, in the river banks or something in yep. the snow. In the right? snow. Yeah. Okay. They should be moving, you would think. You would think so, with this weather. I would think so. All right, I'm going to go. Finally, everybody's ready to go. It's our first morning out, and it's moose mania here in the Yukon. The Yukon is a vast territory, and walking across miles of tundra and muskeg swamp is a slow and difficult process. River hunts in the Yukon helps you cover major ground quietly and with much less effort. Since moose tend to hang around the rivers anyway, it's the best option. And with all the fresh sign on the banks, Vicki knows it's the perfect scenario. When we're hunting, usually it's a little bit warmer out, so we can usually smell it a little better. This is a bull run pit for a moose. He'll come in here, lay down, make himself stink. Look, look how deep it is. I know, look how deep it is though. After several days of searching for moose, Ralph and Vicky are optimistic that the odds are in their favor. You know, when you're out in the woods and you hear a moose, a bull grunt, it's really kind of hard to figure out and pinpoint exactly where that grunt is coming from. He could be facing the opposite direction and you don't hear, you don't know exactly where it came from. He could be facing you and you think he's right there, but he's not. It's pretty deceptive trying to pinpoint where that location is that you heard that grunt coming from. thought we were gonna get it done the first day but it didn't happen you know what you can't pinpoint that bull all the time which is fine because you know what we're in the game it's gonna happen it's the first day no problem we heard a bull we had an encounter we never saw him we think he had a cow with him um, we never saw him this morning we woke up it was really snowy outside and it was a lot different than it normally is when we come up here Normally we don't have all of that extra uh, snow going on and it was pretty dang chilly. <laughs> Didn't see any critters this morning, but like I said, we had an encounter this evening. And um, now we'll go and maybe some hot chocolate, maybe a little soup and salad or something like that, say goodnight, and then tomorrow morning we'll be at it again here at McMillan River Adventures in the Yukon. Well, good morning, it is day four here at McMillan River Adventures. It is a beautiful day. It is um, actually warm out. It's already almost 40 degrees, but we're getting on the boat, so I'm packed up. Got a lot of clothes on, but I have other stuff to change into in case it gets really hot and we get after a moose and get all nasty. So 
and hopefully we get after moose, we get a moose down. It's been cold last day, today it's warmer, and today we're gonna have a moose down. We know it, no doubt about it. Moose mania. <laughs> right? Yes, ma'am. That's the kind of sign we're looking for, Vicky. Yeah, we've seen lots of tracks this morning already, and now a nice new rub. We need to find this guy. We need to find him. I believe we saw cow and calf tracks too, so I mean, we've seen plenty of tracks. Now we just need to find the moose. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Well, we're definitely not knocking him dead, that's for sure. You know, I don't know if it's with the moose or, or what, but like Ryan was saying, we're also dealing with the full moon. Hopefully that moon's gonna start getting darker and we'll see. Our fingers are crossed, but we're out every day and we're trying. I took a shot on him. I've got at least one lung. I'm afraid I might be here too far forward on the angle I was on. Well, we'll just have to give him some time. Yeah. We watched the cows and the calf and the bull. They got to the woods and they went into the woods there. We decided, you know what? When in doubt, let's get out. We got out of there that night. I marked it on my Enrique, on my GPS, made sure we knew where he was at and where we thought he would be the next morning. Um, so we got out of there as quietly as possible and went back to camp. Of course, you know, it's one of those highs and lows of everything that you do. Bow hunting is definitely a high and low thing. Um, going out there, getting exciting, seeing this beautiful bull, lots of points. I've never shot a bull with that many points. I mean, he's just got points everywhere. And just sitting there and th contemplating and thinking about what we did and how we did it and what I should have done, what I could have done, and the not knowing of what's going to happen the next day. It was a long night. Well, believe it or not, we... Uh... We, we had cloud cover most of the night. It's really calm this morning and the temperature's increasing. Not a good thing for the moose, you know, activity. And the activity here has been very slow so far. Um, we just had breakfast and we're gonna go last night, Vicky shot, you know, a nice, a, a really nice bull moose. Uh, arrows a little high and forward, but we're gonna go in, we're gonna have, a, probably with this heat, we're gonna have a south wind, so we're gonna go in on the river side instead of the slough side, and we're gonna stalk in to try to, you know, get to where we last saw him and try to find some blood trailing or maybe he's just laying there. Our fingers are crossed because, you know, she works hard at it and we uh, really wanna see her get her Yukon bull this year. After a sleepless night, Vicki loads up once again to see if she can find her moose. Well, we had, right when we got in, 
<clears throat> excuse me, we went to the map to see where we thought he went in, and we found blood right away. And, you know, highs and lows, we had blood. It looks, I mean, it's not great blood, but it's mm -hmm. blood, and um, we've been on him for, what, about 60 yards now, and I can't find blood. Yeah, he's worked, he's worked his way around the pond that we shot him in, so uh, we're just going to keep looking and just, keep looking. just hope for the best. You got him? Do you got him? Oh my god. He's right there, buddy. Woo! Yeah, buddy. Oh my goodness. I didn't even hit my glove back. Is he in the water? Is he in the water? I see him. I think he. I don't think he's in there too far. He's down. We got him. Way to go, Vic. Moose mania. Boom! She she nailed that bull. He's down. How cool is that? I gotta give her a touchdown. McMillan River Adventures. Once again, Ryan. I mean, look at what we did. This has been a rough hunt so far. It has been. The weather has not been cooperating. It's been really windy the one afternoon. It was in the teens the one morning. Yesterday it was 40 degrees and it was only day four yesterday. I mean, we've had everything go on already. Snow. Last night, we finally got in on this guy. We he had two cows and a calf, so he had plenty of ears and eyes to kind of keep him away from, but we were able to do it. You had that decoy with you, the yep. amount of time to decoy. And it worked great. It did. They didn't seem, that cow and the calves, they did not seem to care whatsoever. Not at all. No, no. I mean, my arrow was a hair forward, but we decided, you know, when in doubt, get out. We found him here this morning, and I don't know what to say. I mean, he's got an amazing amount of points on the side. And I mean, actually all together, he's just a beautiful, beautiful bull. And now the work begins. Yeah. I can't thank you guys enough. I can't thank you enough for hanging out and doing all this with us. And you know what? Gotta thank the big guy up above for watching over us and letting us, you know, being able to take this beautiful animal and have back straps for lunch. Yeah. Well, I guess it'll be dinner by the time we get him out of here. It's been a pleasure having you guys in camp for sure. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are going to have a mess. It was weird. The moose seemed to already be done with their rut. Yeah, they were it, done. It, it was just kind of a strange year. And honestly, because I shot that bull the, the, almost the last day, I mean, the second to the last day of the hunt. Yeah, we, we waited. The weather was... We, we, so so now you hunted pretty much the whole hunt. I did, but that wasn't I didn't my really fault. Hunt. The, the bulls just weren't doing what they needed. The moose wasn't... They didn't no, follow the script. Just, no, and there was no ice, script. And there's ice on the lake, on the puddle, where they and needed to come pick us up. And in that situation, I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, you we got to get rid of the ice. So it was one of those things where it's like, you know what? We could have tried to hunt a little bit longer, but you know what? We needed to get out when the getting was good because otherwise we wouldn't have gotten out at all. Can you say that again? Yeah, we got out when the getting was good was because those we wouldn't have gotten out at all. We had to get out. We had to get out because the getting was good. We had to get out right at that point. Did you get it? Probably just getting ready too, so you could probably give Nani a holler. Oh, look at there's Daddy looking at the camera, looking at you. <laughs> you know, as long as we've been doing this, never get tired of this feeling. And with the week we've had, what a great way to end it with a with the opportunity at this bowl. I can't believe how close we actually got to for that shot opportunity. Sorry, you don't get a lose this year. That's all right. So That's suck okay. it up, Buttercup. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, I never liked this one. A bird. Well, there's proof in the pudding that, you know what? You could be in the best place in the world. Yeah, and move. we've been there and numerous years. Weather can just change things and... Like that. I mean, they were seeing moose, things were moving, and Everything was rocking. We got up yeah. there and it just stopped. It just, it just stopped. I mean, there was nothing going on. I mean, it was really cool, our Montana decoy. Oh. That was a sweet tool to have with us on that and, trip. And you saw what it did. Oh yeah, you, it was you amazing. You had two cows, a calf, and that bull. And we got and to 20 yards of them. I mean, that's that's right there. That works pretty darn yep. good, if you ask me. Proofs in the pudding. Proofs in the pudding. Hey, thanks for watching this week's Archer's Choice. We'll see you next week, same time. Same channel. Right here on, on the, the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice. And you know what? Down up at McMillan River Adventures. I mean, he's always fun to hang, hang out with. Oh yeah. You know, even if it was only for a couple days last week. Yeah, he's a trooper. He is a trooper. Him and Steve. Yeah. We had fun. We did. Thanks, guys. Thank you.